let's talk a little bit about some optimization techniques that you can use within Unity. Now, we're just going to cover just one particular operation, and it's called occlusion culling. Now, occlusion culling is a process where it allows us to show and hide objects based off of what the viewer can actually see. So what I mean by that is, is let me show you a problem. So at the moment, <clears throat> if I focus on this, this is our viewport. So this is what we're actually seeing. So we're seeing this, this, this. But we're rendering everything in our scene. Now this isn't a very complicated scene, but imagine <clears throat> thousands of objects being rendered for no reason. Lights, effects, just a whole bunch of things being rendered. Now, we don't need to do that. And Unity gives us a really, a relatively easy way to bake that out. Now, if we go over to an object, right now you'll see that it sets a static. If we come out to this twirl, we can actually choose the type of static we want to make it. Now we have the includer and the include. E. And the way this works is, is if I choose this small object here, this can be considered an include E because it's a small object that will never block anything else. Now if we look at this, even in this view, it's not. There's no way that this is going to block this from being shown or anything else in general. Now the way cameras um, work is they actually start back here. So they build the the furthest object, then the next object, and then the next, the next, and it just keeps doing this until it finally comes to what's up in front. And in this case, it's actually this one. So this will be one of the, these rocks will be one of the last things that are drawn because it's a stacking order from the background to the foreground. Now, occlusion culling will allow us to now control that and not render everything, which can be a huge savings when you have a monster scene. And so the way that works is, is it takes into account all the static objects or dynamic, I'll talk about that a little later, or dynamic objects, and then it bigs down that information, and then the camera then Using the camera, it will just keep updating what gets shown and what doesn't. And so you can set those static values for uh, either your parent object like this, or you can do it on an individual game object basis. Uh, you go into Window, and you come to this Occlusion Culling, and it'll open up this tab. Now, there are a few tabs in here. I'm not going to show this volume yet, but this is another area to talk about um, you know, Occlusion Culling. We have renderers and we have occlusion area. Renderers are the actual renderers for our game objects. So if we click on that, it's actually the renderer. If we go back to occlusion, uh, we also have occlusion areas. Occlusion areas allow you to limit where the occlusion happens. If we if we use our camera, which is what the renderer uses, it will take the whole scene into consideration and it will bake everything for whatever is in the scene. Whereas occlusion areas will only bake for that particular area. You can use both, but occlusion areas are best for isolating if you want to show some things and never occlude them. Like let's say you have trees in the background, um, you have a massive scene, you have rocks, you have an environment you don't want to hide it, then occlusion will allow us, I mean um, occlusion areas will allow us to still show that just isolate what we want to show and hide. If we come now to our baking screen, just make sure these are set to default. This is what you'll see in the baking screen. We have the smallest occluder hole, and then we have our back face. Back face is really about geometry, what's being seen on the opposite side. I know that's not going to have any effect on the scene, so we're not going to do anything. And when it comes to any optimization, this is something that goes across a whole team. It is don't optimize what you don't need to optimize because it just wastes time. And that's something we do for both programming, game, assets, whatever. If it doesn't need to be optimized, don't optimize it because then you end up creating a, a bigger headache later on. So in this case, we're just going to leave our threshold alone. The smallest hole is basically the viewport of... Um, in diameters where something can and can't be seen. So think of it as literally like a pinhole. Um, and it has a diameter of, let's say, in this case, 0.25, in which the camera has to see through in order for it to be um, considered visible or not. 
the smallest occluder is uh, the size in meters of which this item, anything above it, will hide anything smaller than it. So right now, anything that's 5 meters and above will hide anything that's less than that. So our rocks would pretty much hide everything. Our boulders, shall I say, will hide everything. So let's just jump right into a hip bake. It's not even a waste of time. That bakes relatively quick because there's really not a lot in our scene. And we just have to come here to visualize after we bake. Grab my camera, and you'll see that our perspective line here, anything on the inside of here that's actually in the viewport will be seen. Everything on the outside won't be seen. And that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to make sure that this area isn't being shown because it's actually not being seen. So we see that this is the last thing on our, on our screen. So this is the last thing that should be rendered. And that's exactly what we're getting. It's what we want. If we look behind us, you can see that nothing is being rendered. And if I take our camera and I just move it ever so gently, you'll see that even the shadows are starting to come back now because those lights are also included in the whole process. So as I go back, you see that's coming into view. And as I keep going back, that's coming into view. And because it's never in a viewport, you won't see what's on this last island here. But if I turn my camera, you'll start to see that start showing up. You see? I'll just zoom in a little bit. You'll see that we have this, uh, this little rock structure also showing up. There goes another boulder, and boom, now you see the back face starts to hide because it's no longer uh, in view. And so this is actually the rocks back here. So that's how occlusion really works. Now, if we, if we want to have a little more control on the depth of our uh, occlusion, then what we can do then is, is go back to our baking and change this, the smallest occluder size. So we can change that to 2, let's say, and then rebake. Um, once again, this seems it's not going to affect it too much, um, but you want to be careful because if we click on this and we go edit volumes, you'll see that these boxes are relatively small. So if I take this down to one, let's say, you'll see that as it bakes, the boxes are going to get even smaller, and then the file size goes up. Let's see if we can even go even smaller. Now you're seeing now this is intense. And there's absolutely no reason to be doing things at this level unless you have absolutely small boxes or small items that, that are in half a meter wide. Now you see that now that's 1.3 megabytes that has to be read on a consistent basis um, just because we made these boxes smaller. Now our, our size is relatively big and I know that, that these are bigger than a meter so there's no reason for that. We can stick at our four meters bake it again and get something a little less. So you want to find a nice balance between the two. Something else is the smallest hole. You know, that's the smallest item that uh, before it has um, that it won't be shown. So what we can do is, is I want to show you something quick about the includer and includee relationship. So we have this rock or this boulder over here. If I just bake this as is, and I grab my camera, we go back to visualize, you'll see that although this rock is in front, we are still rendering what's behind the rock. As you can see, it's still being rendered, or this boulder. Technically, you, you'll you never be able to see what's behind this boulder. And so that's where our, our settings come in. And we can change our smallest hole size, let's say it's to 2, and smallest occluder, let's say it's to 3 and then hit bake again. It really comes down to your scene. You, you probably need to, to make a few modifications here and there, but got to make sure visualize is on. <laughs> Don't forget that. But now you can see that some of this is already being hidden. Now we just have to keep playing around with it and finding the right value. Maybe if we take this up to three and hit bake again, and make sure to visualize this on because we're in edit mode. And just playing with our setting, cancel that bake and rebake it again. 
you'll see that more and more comes off. And that's what we want. You want to find a nice balance between showing and hiding information. Now, of course, we can if we take this down to smallest whole, I mean, if we take these down, uh, you know, things will bake even more. But once again, um, as we said before, we want to find a nice medium between the two. So although more of the rocks are going, we're still getting um, some of the shadows, but we're also still getting um, some other things in here. So we, we want to find a nice balance between the size of objects as well as how much we're actually baking down because this this isn't bad. But once again, once you get to, uh, you know, a, a more intense scene, more and more information is going to be necessary and it's going to be hidden. But it'll, it'll definitely cost you in uh, megabytes. So that's occlusion culling. I hope this wasn't too much. And then it's something you can easily just throw into your system and use. Uh, <clears throat> once again, watch out for your baking size. And remember to change your includer and includee. Uh, and that will give you an opportunity to hide some of these items. But um, also, it's also the size of your item. You know, you want to make these things into chunks that can be occluded um, relatively easy. We don't want, you know, in this case, I believe these things are probably near less than a meter or around uh, a meter. So it makes it really difficult. And these boulders, as we saw before, uh, if only a piece of it shows, the whole entire boulder has to be rendered. So, you know, having smaller pieces, you know, just a medium-sized piece for the boulder instead of having a massive one will also aid in the occlusion. This is Edison Abelard, and I'm out.